Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for your course here. Um, in this course, you should be using a what I call a class development box, a virtual box. Um, and in this video, our purpose is we want to look at the Visual Studio Code uh, editor um, and uh, development uh, IDE. It's, it's, it's almost like a full IDE, basically. Um, so in this video, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go over the, the features and some of the, the things of, of using uh, Visual Studio Code, okay? So this is different from Visual Studio Community, okay? Visual Studio Code is a new um, editor environment. It's cross-platform, so it works on Linux as well as Mac and, and Windows. Um, so we're going to look at all these things, the command palette, uh, basic commands, uh, how you open up a file uh, to work on assignments for this class, the basic clean build test um, um, cycle that you'll do uh, in order to work on your assignments, um, and the IntelliSense code formatting and using the debugger in, in this video. Okay, so um, here's my Windows, or sorry, my, my Linux development desktop here, um, all set up. Um, so as a reminder, um, if you're in this particular class. You should have uh, the, your development environment set up here, um, and um, you should find a link over here which goes to the top level of your um, uh, your repository with all of the assignments and other files for the class here. Um, so let me bring up one doc. I've got two docs that we'll look at. In, in here today, um, but I want to bring up the Visual Studio Code uh, keyboard shortcuts. So, so here's a document of some um, keyboard shortcuts uh, to get you started. Um, so the the normal commands for Visual Studio Code, like copy and paste for you know Control C for copy, Control X for um, cut, um, Control V for paste and things, um, Control S to save and things like that. So, so for, for the standard key bindings, most of those are there, plus, you know, here's a good basic beginning set of some other stuff that might be of interest for you to learn uh, in there, okay? So while I do want to show this command palette here, so anyway, let, let's let's start up the um, uh, visual code here. So if you had it, um, um, uh, so I should show again in case you haven't watched any of the previous videos. Uh, so, so if you don't have it on your doc yet, you can click on your activities and search for it. So if you just type in code, you should find it. And I usually right-click on these that I'm going to use a lot um, and add them to my favorites. So that's why it was over there on my doc, basically. So, so here's, here's um, visual code. Uh, it'll start up with a welcome screen the first time that you use it. Um, so Visual Code, kind of like Sublime and Atom, these are kind of a new generation of editors that are meant for programming editors. Uh, they all have have kind of some common features, okay? I think, I mean, I've been impressed by Visual Studio Code. It's, it's the newer of the three, but um, it, it beats the other two in a lot of ways. So I'm probably going to be recommending or even requiring you to use this tool just because it's a good one to learn, right? Um, but you can get a similar experience with, with these others. Uh, VI and Emacs are older editors. You can do all the things you can do in the newer ones, uh, but the interfaces are going to be a little bit... Uh, not quite so modern and a little bit different, okay? So mostly Visual Studio Code is meant to be used kind of in a full screen mode, and, and it's really a um, it's really a paned uh, editor. Uh, so, so that you lay out your things in, in panes, your, your different editing fields, okay? So I'm, but I'm probably jumping ahead here. So um, let's get back. Um, so, you know, you can find your basic commands. Let me, let me show that command palette, first of all. So the Control-Shift P called the command palette or show all commands. So, so while you can maybe find commands, you know, using the menus, there's not a whole lot of. There's a lot more commands than you can access through the menus here that are available. Okay, and that's that's pretty common on these newer editors. Okay, these, these editors are highly extensible. Um, so, so they've got a lot, lots of hooks in there for programmers to go in and, and uh, set them up exactly the way they want and need to do things. Okay, so. Um, these things over here, um, so you, we've got uh, an explorer. Uh, I've already got this open. I should have, let me close that off so I can show you um, opening um, that back up again. So normally when you first start up on this, uh, there'll be no folders open. Um, 
uh, you can do basic search and replace up to here. Um, so, or, or you can remember the keyboard shortcuts. Um, so, Control F is find for search, um, and Control H to, to replace basically. Uh, it's got a full built-in Git source control, so I'll show that as soon as I open up something here. Um, and, and, a, and it has an integrated debugger. I think of the three editors, I haven't used Sublime as much as the other, as, as this one and Atom, but definitely the, the support for the, the debugger inside of to making it more like a full integrated development environment uh, is much better than my experience on the other um, editors here. Um, and uh, it, like I said, it, it supports extensions like the other editors do. Okay, so you can find lots of things to to install. Um, Visual Code calls them extensions. Okay, so by default, I will install for you the IntelliSense for C C plus plus since our code projects are in, using the C plus plus language, um, and this Uncrustify tool for doing code formatting um, and enforcing coding standards, basically. Okay, so. Um, Let's look at opening a project file to work on assignment. So, so Visual Code um, has an, uh, um, a more complex idea, uh, concept of a workspace, but you don't really need that. If, if all of your code is just in a single folder, really all you want to do is just open a, um, uh, a folder. Uh, so um, 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 you can just add it to your workspace, or you can just go to the Explorer and say open folder, okay? And in our case, you really should open the top-level folder, so you don't want to open up like a specific folder, like if you're working on assignment one. Even if you're working on assignment one, you should open up um, the top level because we've got um, basically the configuration for all of these assignments, all these projects reside in the top level. So you need to open it up kind of at the root of the uh, uh, of the repository for, for this class, the way we've got things set up here. Okay, so just select that and say OK. And your Explorer then will have, um, you can open up, and, and you know, it's a, it's a file browser, so you can see, um, you know, at the top level, we've got all those directories that you should have seen, scripts and whatever, and we've got the assignments directory, and then, you know, you can, you can open those up. We're going to be looking at the example one project here today. Um, oh, sorry, in the next video, I'll look at that in more detail. Um, so yeah, actually, I might use um, um, the assignment one uh, files here for some examples, OK? Um, so I was used to something's missing here a little bit, so I'll have to check that out. Um, um, oh, there it is. So. Yeah, so th this is kind of integrated with Git. So, you know, files that you've been modifying, you've got little notifications over here in terms of the, the, the status of the files in your repository, whether they're new files or they've been modified from the, um, the, the existing last check-in and things like that. So. Um, all right, so oh, and, and so so I've got to show the the command palette. Um, so if you Control Shift P, that allows you to. Th this is becoming very common in editors that have lots and lots of commands. So, so this is a good way to kind of learn your way around. So if you have an idea for a command, you know, like like if I want to open a file, um, you know, you, you can use a basic search here, um, and you'll get all the things open, including you know, uh, open file or open folder and things like that. Plus also the keyboard shortcuts. All right, so you know, this this. Um, probably can make you more productive if you start learning to use this rather than try, trying to search through kind of menus. And, and also at the same time using this, uh, and if you find yourself using a command over and over, uh, learning the keyboard shortcuts and, and, and beginning to use those instead, okay? Um, okay, so let's, let, let, let's show the basic um, uh, way that you work on assignments in this class here, okay? So um, things should be set up. so. If we wanted to, let's say, work on assignment one, your, your first assignment for this class, um, you can you can um, bring it down. You can see all the files in assignment one, and, and if you single click on one of these, uh, it opens it up. But notice this is kind of um, in italics, so so this is just kind of a uh, what's it called? Um, 
I think all three of the editors that I talked about do the same thing because you can kind of quickly quick, click through there, so it's not really completely open up. Um, it, this just allows you to search through files. If you want to open it up permanently, just double click on there. Um, so if I want to get assignment one functions open, I can double click on there. So now, notice it's not italics anymore, it, it's open the file. Um, and let's say I want to have assignment. Well, I want to have my test file. This is my unit test. Okay, and I'll talk about the unit test in more detail uh, in the next video. But here I wanted to show kind of the pained using. So if you take a tab and you drag it, uh, like, like if I want to split horizontally, I could put it down here. Um, uh, I tend to work more vertically since since I have um, a um, kind of a widescreen uh, environment here. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you can have your things side by side, and you, keep, you can keep splitting things like this, uh, you know, so I might make a little bit less space for my file explorer. You can always hide this if you really want even more space, right, by, by clicking and then unclicking on it. Um, so, actually, let me um, switch these around. I want to have my functions over on the right and my, my unit tests over here on the left, okay? Um, and um, I'm going to uncomment the first unit test here. So, so let me uncomment that. Like that. All right. Um, so, like I said here, I, I want to show you the, the basic thing. So the, the build system, um, I've set it up by default. So the, the, the make build system that I showed you in the previous um, video can be accessed, so, so those make fields, um, and we've got basic commands, keyboard shortcuts um, bound to the, the three most common ones you'll use. So clean up your files, uh, do a build, so this is like make all, build everything, uh, and then run the unit tests, okay? Um, one of the, the control shift B is, is actually built into Visual Studio Code. I added in these other keyboard shortcuts um, for convenience. So, so let's, let's try the first one. Um, so if you do control shift C to clean, um, oh, and, and by the way, you can find these. So if you want to, these are all what are known as tasks in Visual Studio Code. So if you open up the um, command palette and, and search for tasks, um, if you want to re if you want to run these tasks um, or run others, find the run task and, and, and so like I said we, we've got three by default uh, into the environment make all make clean and make run okay so we can do make clean by selecting that or we can do the control shift C um, and so notice whenever you run a command it's th these are really th 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 one reason why I think I like Visual Studio Code is because I really do like doing stuff from the command line. Uh, and Visual Studio Code really just basically integrates in uh, a terminal. And you can actually open up multiple terminals. So by default, when you run these tasks like this, shell tasks, um, it just does it down in a terminal like this. Okay. So notice that uh, um, um, oh, I did a make run. I, I meant to do a make clean. Did I do a control shift B, control shift C? Uh, I might have my keyboard shortcuts. Um, um, uh, I have to check the keyboard shortcut. So, so I, let me run it from the command pod. I meant to run. I meant to run clean, but it's not running clean. It's running the, the make run. So I must have messed up the uh, the, the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so so I'll just run it by hand. So I'll open up the, the command palette, choose run task, and, and let's do the make clean. So that's what I wanted. Um, so I often kind of just delete off the terminal um, so that when I run a new one, I can see right from the beginning what it did. Okay, so there was the make clean. Um, so this just cleaned up so I can have a, make certain I have a fresh build when I want to rebuild all my source code. Um, and, and like I was starting to say, if you want to, you can, you can open up your own terminals from within there so you don't have, have to leave your pained environment um, um, and, and um, uh, do the, uh, oh, uh, in this case though, you have to change to the assignment one, like I, I said in the video, um, the previous video, if you want to run these build targets, like make clean and whatever. 
Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and close that one off, okay? So then the, the next task is um, what you normally do is you, you want to make some edits and then you want to build your code and test it, okay? So let's see, if I have control shift B, uh, should be make all. So that one's correct. I got my keyboard cor um, target correct for that one, okay? So at this point, though, we're getting errors. So, so you can see errors, and, and I'll talk about the IntelliSense here um, in, in, a, in a moment. So, but, but that was an attempt to build. So again, um, you know, if you restart, kill your terminal and restart it, you can just scroll this right to the top and, and see from the start you know, the, the build. And uh, in this case, we're having build errors in the assignment1test.cpp, so this file here. So notice the IntelliSense, um, I'm skipping ahead here, but you, you can see where the, um, uh, over here um, in the, the preview uh, where, and, and the, the, the squiggly lines are the, the places where there were errors here that were detected in the build. So. Um, and in this case, since we didn't successfully build, um, I can't really show running the tests um, because there's no executable to run yet. So um, I'll, I'll fix, actually, I'll probably recomment these and, and then we'll run it. So, um, so anyway, that, that's the, those are the three main things that you need, and uh, I'll fix these shortcuts. So you can either you know do the run tasks and select the correct ones, or, or you can learn the keyboard shortcuts. Control C will be for clean. Control uh, sh uh, Shift B for build, and Control Shift T for uh, for running the unit tests. Okay. Um, so let's look at the the compiler error messages here. So um, so they can be a little bit subtle to see, that, but anything that's underlined. Uh, were things that were detected were, that were problems, either warnings or actual errors and things, okay? Um, and if you hover over that, uh, you'll get um, more information about this, okay? Um, for, for actual compile problems, you can click on the problems over here, um, and you'll also get these uh, error messages from the build, basically, uh, but you'll also get them from IntelliSense, okay? So one thing, so line numbers are turned on by default on these editors, which is a good thing, so, you know, uh, but you, you can click on this and it'll take you to the location in the file, but uh, in case this clicking isn't working, which can happen is sometimes things get misconfigured, over here are the line number um, and the column where it occurs, so this calculate mean um, identifiers undefined occurs on line 36 starting at column 5, so basically right there. Um, so that's, you know, so, so this is set up to, to help you find your errors and, and, and understand them and, and, and fix them, okay? Um, and then let me, let me comment this back in to show, uh, so, so if I do that, the build, it'll be able to build again if we recomment these things. Save it and do a build all here. So I forgot to restart my terminal, so if you don't restart, the, the problem is, is that it just appends onto the end, it reads as the terminal. Um, so it'll, it'll be a little bit tougher to, to scroll back up and, and find where the beginning is of the latest build that you did. So, but that's okay. Um, so right now it, it's building um, the assignment one tests file and then it built assignment one functions and it's linking together um, the test and now it linked it, then the, the debug executable and it, it actually succeeded with no errors, right? So there were no problems detected um, uh, on the build that time, okay? Um, so and now since we actually built um, a, a test executable uh, successfully, um, I can actually run the test. So if you do the control shift T, um, and run that. In this case, this is all the tests are commented out. When it tries to run the test, um, it'll see that no tests are run. But, but that will run the unit tests for you that we'll talk more about in the uh, next video um, here. Okay? So those are the, the main commands that you want to use. Uh, control shift c to clean, control shift b to build, and control shift t to run your unit tests. Um, um, all right, and, and, and yeah, we saw these. So let's, let's, let me talk a little bit about the code formatter. So by default, um, we install 
this untrustify extension in order to enforce uh, coding style guidelines. So let me show how that works here. So let's say, let me go ahead and begin writing some code here. Uh, though I won't give you the solution for calculate mean, but um, let's say that we're going to write a, a file called calculate mean, but it returns an integer. I'll put a bunch of space in here. Um, and we'll put um, a brace on the end here, and I'll remove some indentation, make a comment. Maybe write some code, uh, put some space around the white space here. Uh, I won't put any um, curly braces around here. Um, let's say x is less than 5. All right, so I, I mean, I'm intentionally, you know, not formatting this at all in the right way, okay? So what, what the, um, the um, code beautifier or, or the code formatter does is it enforces a set of coding style guidelines. It can't enforce everything, but uh, so, so some things I know that it should always fix. So it should always put curly braces on it, their own line, uh, correctly indented. It should correctly indent all the code. So we use two spaces, no tabs for our um, coding style for this class. So it should correctly uh, indent everything the way it needs to be done. Um, and it will enforce that all code blocks should have curly braces around them. So you can't have, even though, you know, this is just a single line statement for the if statement, uh, it will put the curly braces around there. That, that prevents certain kinds of bugs from happening. Um, and make certain that, that we only have one white space before and after binary operators and things like that, okay? These are all common things in coding style guidelines um, if you ever have to, to program for, um, um, you know, with a group um, uh, as like a software engineer or something like that, you'll most likely have a set of coding style guidelines that you have to conform to for your programs, okay? So you, you, can, you can run... So if you look for format, control shift i will format the document, so you can run it by hand. Uh, but it's also set up so, so it'll, it'll run the format on save. So every time you do a save, um, it should run the formatter. So uh, we did here. So uh, I see, though, that uh, my comment didn't get correctly indented, so maybe I'll go back and check my... Uh, oh, and it didn't, didn't change the space here. So I don't know. I'll see if I can add both of those to the coding style guidelines. Okay. So, so, you know, it might not fix everything. Um, so, so, you know, I might still, for the assignments that you do for the class, um, say that, that um, uh, you've got some issues that you need to fix. Um, uh, this one it should have fixed. Um, so there should only be one space before and after um, uh, a uh, binary operator is, like, less than and equal. So I have to, I have to go and check those. Okay. But anyway, so that, that's in there. Uh, by default, right? Um, so it, it'll try and do things for you um, in terms of indenting your code correctly and formatting stuff every time you save. Um, it'll also try and, and get these 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 block comments. Um, so you are required to put block comments like this that document your functions. Um, so if you do that, it'll go back and realign. Um, so, so you should have a star uh, before every line for one of these block comments, um, uh, and it'll line those things back up and, and that kind of thing. Okay. So anyway, you know, it, it doesn't give you 100%, but but it will. Um, and I can. Uh, there's a few things I see I have to fix here, uh, but but it will. You know, especially things like um, indentation. Um, it should correct, and, and things like white space around operators and, and the placement of curly braces and things are all normal things that are defined as part of a coding standard. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's what the code formatter is. Um, and then as a final quick thing, let's look at the debugger. So um, so when I build this, as I've shown, um, It builds actually two executables by default on these assignments 
uh, for your class. Um, it, it builds the, the a test, which is a set of unit tests that you have to pass when you're doing these assignments. And it also de builds a debug executable. Okay, so the debug executable um, starts, there's a main function in, uh, so for all these projects, there'll be something called assignment whatever dash main. And, and that's where the main function is for the debug uh, executable. So, so if you need to get into a debugger and debug your code, um, you can um, uh, uh, use the debugger in this way. And, and it'll start executing from here, okay? So let, let me go ahead. Um, so if you want to set a breakpoint, uh, you can click over here in the gutter. So if I want to set a breakpoint on the first statement um, in um, when I run the debugger, um, I can you know, click over here. That'll set a breakpoint. Um, the, the, the key command to start the debugger is um, uh, F5, right? Um, or again, you can use the command palette. So um, if we look for debug, you should find that um, um, it's probably called like start debugger. Um, there it is. So, so debug, start debugging F5 is, is the main way you start the debugger. Okay. So, um, so let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to use F5. So we'll start it up. So what it, what it does, when it does this, is, I mean, it, it basically is, by default, will use the, the GNU debugger, GDB, all right? Um, and it will use it to debug uh, the debug executable, so, so the one that's linked together with the assignment one main, okay? So we ran, um, and, and we're in the debugger now, um, and it actually, um, oh, it, by, by default, it stops at the very start, first statement, so it didn't actually even run to my 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 breakpoint. Um, so it always, when it runs the debugger, um, it starts running and then um, um, stops. Um, so you can start stepping right away with the first statement in, in your main function. Okay. So you've got your normal kinds of things for a debugger. You can step over, uh, step in, and these all have keyboard shortcuts. Um, if, if you want to learn those, you can stop the, the debugger. Um, so let's kind of step over the statement here. So, and, and over on the left here, you know, um, so, so you've got your local variables. So this is the values of all my local variables. So I'm, I'm about ready to um, assign a value of zero to mean um, here, right? Um, and this is your call stack. Um, so if, if you're calling functions, you can see where you are, uh, at which function call which other function and so on, right? Um, and so on. And this is a standard kind of debugger. Um, and in actuality, I mean, another thing that I really liked about Visual Code Studio that it integra integrates with the GNU debugger, which is a very powerful debugging um, debugger. Um, and, and if you want to, you can actually use the, the GNU debugger right from here. So like it says, you can enter in GDB debugger commands using dash exec in a command. Okay, So... Um, I've got the, the GDB, the GNU debugger cheat sheet here. So, um, you know, you can do the basic things from the interface, like, like um, setting breakpoints and setting watch points and examining the values of your local variables. But if you need to do things, something more complicated, uh, you can actually enter in GDB commands. Um, and, and this is just a few of them. Um, so, um, so more complicated watch points and, and how you examine the stack, and you can actually uh, uh, step through the stack and, and other things. All right. All right. And when you're done with the debugger, you can just um, you can just stop it, or you can do just continue. If you continue, it it'll run till the end point, um, um, and, and it'll be finished. All right. And and the so at this point the deb debugger stopped. We're out of debug mode, although it kept the debug console. Um, up here, so. All right. So I think those are the basic features, and so I think we covered all these here. So we looked at the command palette. Um, we looked at opening up um, um, a project file, and remember, for this, like I said, you should always just open the root of our uh, repository. Uh, that's how things are configured to work here, right? Um, 
um, uh, your basic clean build and test cycle. So you'll use these the most when so you'll you'll make a change, you'll edit your code, uh, and then you'll build and test it basically. Um, so. And all these things are also set up so you can you know look at your compiler error messages and and um, you'll get the the coding style guidelines and you can use the debugger and um, if you need to and that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope they give you a flavor of what you can do with Visual Studio Code, and I hope you find it a useful editor. So it looks like it's, it's going to become um, um, a pretty popular and common tool that, that you'll find being used in a lot of places for doing um, um, software engineering and programming. So. All right, so that's it.